uh, rebut that, and then uh, Mr. Estrina would have another minute if he chooses. So uh, Rob talks about all the angry people. Those are, of course, the people who appear in his television advertisements. No. Uh, Rob, I've been elected five times in Russia. Most recently with 79% of the vote, which is the most that any mayoral candidate has ever received. And I think that is a far better measure of how the people I represent regard the leadership and the service that I've offered than the dishonest statements that you've put on television and subjected the people of Westchester to over these last months. And this kind of stuff, this is why people hate politics. Because we've got big things to talk about that are really going to impact lives and really impact our future. And time and time again throughout this debate and throughout this campaign, Rob brings it back to these kinds of personal, negative, dishonest claims that have nothing to do with anyone's lives. And that's what you do when you don't think the truth is on your side. When you believe the truth is on your side, you run an honest campaign that looks ahead to the future and says, here's what I want to accomplish for the people I will represent if you trust me with leadership. And I hope that we can spend the rest of this debate elevating the conversation a little bit instead of getting back into over and over and over again these false and misleading claims which don't serve anybody. Mr. Astorino, 60 seconds, and then we will move on to our next question. If the people of New Rochelle don't feel the pain anymore, it's because they're numb. 109% know you can't disregard that, you can't deny it. There's 16 budgets. But, go to look up the budget on the New Rochelle website. For some reason, during the summer, when you announced it was taken off. But you can still get those numbers from the controller's report. That's undeniable. You cannot deny it. And that's not personal, by the way. That's your public record. That is what you would do. You've already said you would raise taxes as county executive by sticking within the tax cap. That's an automatic tax hike. We've said, I don't care what the tax cap is, we're gonna live within our means, we're gonna force fiscal discipline, and we're gonna do that bipartisan with the county legislators, and we did. All three budgets were passed unanimously. Now the last budget, when Democrats walked out, it was me who said to them, look, we have to get together, we put them in a conference room, the minority leader, of the Republicans and two Democrats. We got together and we reached a bipartisan compromise which passed a budget without raising taxes, unlike what they're doing in Washington, D.C. these days. We know how to do things, get things done in a bipartisan way. So if you want to talk about personal, the day you were nominated, I put something on Facebook, a picture of and I, and I said, good luck. And what was the response? He's an extremist. He's a disaster. He's this, he's that, and that's all it's been since day one. Because I wouldn't want to talk about your record in New Rochelle either. So you use the smoke cloud, thinking people won't understand well, what happened in New Rochelle. So Steve, if I may, um, let's, let's talk about why I would call you, why I would call your politics extreme rock. Um, and this is important, because we have traditionally in Westchester, Democrats and Republicans both, governed out of a moderate mainstream tradition. Whether you look at George Pataki, or Nick Spano, or Sue Kelly, or so many others who called themselves pro-choice, who were cared about the environment, who cared about equal rights for all of us. Rob, here in Westchester, you vetoed legislation that would protect women from harassment and bullying when they try to access medical services. And you did it because you're against a woman's right to choose, and you think politicians like yourself should be making personal decisions instead of women. Nope. You made the decision, Rob, to bring gun shows back to Westchester County after they've been banned for 10 years, even though we know the background checks at gun shows are notoriously lax and let the wrong people get their hands on firearms. And you did it because you oppose common sense gun safety standards. You're against the ban on assault weapons at the state level. True. You're against state limitations on high capacity ammunition clips. And when New York State took the lead in making it possible for all of us to have equal rights when it comes to marriage, you went to the State Conservative Party and praised the Conservative Party leader for his steadfast opposition to marriage equality. So I consider those positions, you're entitled to hold them, but they are far to the right, far more conservative, far more in line with the Tea Party than what people in Westchester expect from their leaders at the regional level, and they don't reflect the values of this community. Mr. Astorino, I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Last word on this, and we're going to move on. The only thing extreme are your tax increases. Now, if you hate the Tea Party so much, then I'm going to ask you a question. Mr. Giulio Cavallo, the founder of the Tea Party, has endorsed you. Mr. Giulio Cavallo, 
uh, is on your campaign. So I call on Mr. Giulio Cavallo to step down as the chair of the Independence Party. Why don't you do the same? Or is it that Tea Partiers are okay if they're with you? So I would get away from this quickly, Noam, because you gotta look around who you're hanging out with. And the founder of the Westchester Tea Party is on your campaign. Uh, well, you, you know, know what? what? I'm gonna let this keep going <laughs> because that uh, that uh, deserves an answer for the audience here. 